Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to solve this packet tracer activity. Investigate NAT operations. Before coming to this activity, friends, if you like to get any CCNA online classes or any technical support, you can contact our team using our website. Link you will get from the description below. And also, if you like to get this type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. And don't forget to enable that bell icon so that you will get notification message whenever we upload a new video. Coming back to this activity, here we can see addressing table. The following table provides addressing for networking device interfaces only. Okay, here we can see the objectives. Part 1 Investigate NAT operation across the intranet. In part 2, investigate NAT operation across the internet. Then in part 3, contact further investigations. Also, we will go through the scenario. As a frame travels across a network, the MAC addresses may change. IP addresses can also change when a packet is forwarded by a device configured with NAT. In this activity, we will investigate what happens to IP addresses during the NAT process. Yes, in this activity, we are not going to configure any NAT. We are going to investigate NAT operation. Okay, we will do it one by one. Part 1. Investigate NAT operation across the intranet. Step 1. Wait for the network to converge. It might take a few minutes for everything in the network to converge. You can speed the process up by clicking fast forward time. So here we can see that option. Here you can click and you can fast forward time. Coming to step 2. Generate an HTTP request from any PC in the central domain. Uh, switch to simulation mode and edit the filters to show only HTTP request. Now coming to our Cisco packet tracer. Uh, here we can see simulation option. Click here. And here uh, we can see visible events only ICMP. Uh, if you have a uh, more number of uh, events then you can click on this uh, show all none so it comes uh, none we'll go to edit filters and we will uh, choose only this uh, http so we can go to ip misc and we can choose this uh, http here here we can see visible events only http then open the web browser of any PC in the central domain and type the URL. Just I will copy this URL and click go. Minimize the browser window. Okay, just I will close this uh, simulation panel and uh, here we can see central domain. We can choose any one of this uh, PC. I will go to PC1. Then we will go to desktop and here we have a web browser and paste that URL we copied then click go then we will minimize this PC1 window then click capture or forward until the PDU is over D1 or D2 click on the most recent PDU in the event list record the source and destination IP address so here we can see our multi-layer switches D1 and D2 we will click on this uh, capture bar forward so here we can see the packet http packet click again it goes to s1 click again and it goes to d1 to what devices do those addresses uh, belong here we will go to event list and we will uh, choose this uh, packet and uh, here we can see source IP address 10.2.0.4 IP address of this uh, PC PC1 then uh, destination IP 64.100.200.1 we can verify that from our addressing table and uh, here we can see that address belongs to the interface serial 001.1 device is R4.
Then click capture or forward until the PDU is over R2. Record the source and destination IP addresses in the outbound packet. So just I will close this simulation panel and we will click on this uh, capture or forward and we can see this packet is in R2. To what devices do those addresses belong? Okay, we will verify that coming to this packet. Here we will uh, check this uh, outlayers or outbound packet and here we can see that source IP 64.100.100.3 and destination IP 64.100.200.1 so coming to our addressing table uh, we will uh, search for this IP address but here we cannot see this uh, source IP address in this addressing table uh, that means uh, which is not assigned to any interface then a destination IP address 64.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.100.
again coming to R4 and here we can see in CD local 172.16.0.3 so actually we can see they are private IP address and they are reserved for uh, private use did any private addresses cross the intranet obviously not here this uh, private address is uh, translated into public IP address click the reset simulation button and remain in simulation model okay here we will go to event list and click on this reset simulation now we will go to part 2 investigate NAT operation across the internet step 1 generate an HTTP request from any computer in the home office open the web browser of any PC in the home office domain and type the URL just I will copy this URL and click go here just we will close this simulation panel and we will go to that home office here we can see home office we will click on any PC ok we will go to home desktop desktop then web browser then paste that URL here then click go click capture bar forward until the PDU is over WRS Record the inbound source and destination IP addresses and the outbound source and destination addresses. So here we will click on capture or forward. So here we can see that packet which goes to WRS. To what devices do those addresses belong? We will verify that. Click on this uh, packet and here we can see uh, in layers source IP address is 192.168.0.101 the IP address of this uh, home desktop then destination IP address is uh, 64.100.100.2 so we will go to our addressing table and we will uh, check this IP address 64.100.100.2 here we can see that IP address interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 in this device R2. Now we will let check in out layers. Here we can see source IP address 64.104.223.2. Coming to our addressing table, here we can see that address belongs to this device WRS. And we can see its destination IP 64.100.100.2 belongs to this device R2. Next, click capture or forward until the PDU is over R2. Record the source and destination IP addresses in the outbound packet. So we will uh, click capture or forward. It goes to this uh, modem, then to the internet. Then we can see it goes to R2. To what device do those addresses belong? Okay, we will analyze this packet. Your out layers, we can see this source IP 64.104.223.2. So we will verify this IP address coming to our addressing table. Here we can see 64.104.223. That means the source IP belongs to WRS. Then we can see a destination IP address 10.10.10.2, the IP address of this server central server.pka here we can see that IP address on R2 run the following command and match the IP addresses and the ports recorded above to the correct line of output we have to give this command show IP NAT translations so we will go to this router R2 and we will give this command again show IP net translations here we can see a protocol inside global and here we can see inside the local the private IP address then outside local also we can see outside global 
Now return to real time mode. Did all of the web pages appear in the browsers? Okay, we will uh, go to real time. Then here we will see PC1 and here we get the uh, web page branch server. Then we'll go to home desktop and here we can see we get the web page central server. We will go to part 3 contact further investigations experiment with more packets both http and https and answer the following questions do the nat translation tables grow yes obviously it will grow um, if you um, try to access the web page or if you do the ping we will have a test we'll go to home laptop web browser and here i will go to this uh, web page again we'll go to home desktop we will browse that web page then we'll go to r2 and we'll verify our uh, translations and here we can see more entries does wrs have a nat pool of addresses here we can see our wrs and it's obviously not it uses the same IP address for all devices. Is this how the computers in the classroom connect to the internet? Uh, we can say mostly and it depends on the um, organization. And we can check that using this method. Uh, we can uh, access any web page then we have to uh, give this a show command show IP NAT translations. Why does the NAT use four columns of addresses and ports? So we can see those different addresses uh, inside global, inside local, then we have outside local and outside global. Where are the networks are inside global and inside local? So we have seen this inside local, the private IP address given to uh, the intermediate devices as well as these entity devices. So here we can see that inside local the private IP address then we have inside global so this address we set for the uh, WAN inside here we can see that for the interface serial 0 0 0 in R2 on which devices are NAT services operating what do they have in common uh, we can see uh, they implemented in uh, R2 then this router R4, then here in this home office they implemented in WRS. Here we can see these devices are connecting these internal uh, devices to the internet or to this intranet. Here these private IP addresses are not routed in the internet or in the intranet. So these devices R2, R4 and WRS, they will translate this uh, private IP address into public IP address. Okay, that's all in this video. Investigate NAT operations. Next video, we will see how to configure static NAT. Now, dear friends, if you have any doubt, any suggestions regarding this packet tracer activity, please comment below. Or you can contact our team using our website. Link you will get from the description below. And if you like your video, give a thumb and share with all your friends. Stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video. Thank you.